Bonjour et bienvenue à Rendez-vous avec Yasmin et Kuma. Our Rendez-vous today takes you to two of the most beautiful gardens in Sri Lanka and France. On the 1st of March 2013, the most widely read paid national French newspaper, Le Monde, featured an article entitled Lunuganga Leden Cachet du Sri Lanka. The article says, Né du projet fou d'un ancien avocat devenu architecte visionnaire, ce parc de 10 hectares est un arbre de sophistication au cœur de la jungle tropicale. The architect in question is none other than Jeffrey Bauer, who designed and renovated this house. For Druvi, one of Sri Lanka's most acclaimed pianists, and Shamini Diserum, the house is designed with a music room in the center. Where the company of renowned architect Chandra Daswatta, often and always referred to as the spiritual successor to Jeffrey Bhava. Chandra, how did Bhava's work influence you to be the architect you are today? Well, I guess I've worked with him for almost six years of the last years of his life and were involved in some seminal works, including the beautiful Kandalama Hotel, uh, the Lighthouse and the Blue Water. So it does have a very strong effect on the way you look at space, the way you look at the interaction of space with people, which is really what Jeffrey was interested in. Uh, the idea of how people move through space and how that space connects with the incredible environment that we have here in Sri Lanka. And that's something that I've carried with me all along and I guess having worked with Jeffrey one got a little leg up as it were uh, when it came to trying to convince your clients as to what you were able to do. Nunyukanga was created by Jeffrey Bauer over a period of 40 years and is considered to be a seminal expression of his practice. The Lunuganga project is considered as Bawa's personal architectural odyssey which ended up as being one of the most important Asian gardens of the 20th century. Shana, what are your views on that? Well, Lunuganga was started before Jeffrey became an architect. So in many ways, it contains his kind of ideal as to what an environment to uh, enjoy uh, life would be. Uh, and that's really what it's about. And it certainly is his personal project because if you look at different parts of the garden, you begin to see him experimenting with some of the architectural ideas that he was to later take on in some of his buildings. And what's also unique about the garden is that, and, and Asian about the garden, is that he's taken an existing landscape, um, allowed it to grow wild and then cut it back, almost carved it into a series of spaces that can only be in Asia or in Sri Lanka. In that, in that way, it's a uniquely Asian garden. Well, time for a short break now. Stay with us for our next rendezvous at French Impressionist painter Monet's garden in Giverny. And so welcome back to Rendezvous. And we take you on a visit to Claude Monet's garden in Giverny in France. Giverny is a commune in the region of Normandy in France. It is best known as the location of French Impressionist painter Claude Monet's garden and home. After buying the property in 1890, he set out to create the magnificent gardens he wanted to paint. The Foundation Claude Monet is a non-profit organization that runs and preserves the house and gardens of Claude Monet in Giverny, where Monet lived and painted for 43 years. Monet was inspired by his gardens and spent years transforming them. Planting thousands of flowers, he believed 
that it was important to surround himself with nature and paint outdoors. He created many paintings of his house and gardens, especially of water lilies, the Japanese bridge, and a weeping willow tree. Some of his most famous paintings were of his garden in Giverny, famous for its rectangular clothed Norman with archways of climbing plants entwined around colored shrubs and the water garden, formed by a tributary to the Ept River. Monet lived and painted in Giverny from 1883 to his death in 1926 and directed the renovation of the house, retaining its pink painted walls. Colors from the painter's own palette were used for the interior green for the outdoors and shutters, yellow in the dining room. Charlotte, do you see any similarities between uh, Lunuganga and Giverny? Well, I think you do. Like a lot of gardens are really about humans trying to civilize a wilderness. And Lunuganga certainly is, Jeffrey, civilizing a wilderness. And you begin to see Monet's attempts at that in Giverny, where plants are allowed in many ways to grow the way they wish to grow. And then they're cut back and tamed to put on some kind of civility into it. In that way, I think there's lots of similarities between the two gardens. C'est la fin de notre épisode sur les jardins éblouissants. Merci de votre attention. Au revoir, à la prochaine.